next is um, taking the paint off. So uh, I do have a sandblaster cabinet, but it's a tiny, tiny job. It's not really big enough. I mean, you can just about get this wheel in there, but it's it's a bit of a fiddle. And to be honest, it, sometimes it's just as quick to to me mechanically remove it. the old uh, valve we'll get a new one we'll get a 90 degree valve it's just easier that they come out and it's easier to get an air hose on get my trusty scraper uh, we could put some um, I'm just going to see how easy the top coat comes off because it's pretty hasn't bonded very well uh, if it doesn't scrape off easily uh, we'll get the magic paint stripper onto it. So let's just see what it's just like. Yeah, it's it's pretty flaky so we'll, we'll get off. We'll get off most of the paint. And the southern bits will put a bit of Thanks for going. Anyway, you don't need to watch this. Come back in um, an hour or so. Rinse and repeat, like we did with the exhaust pipes. Chuck on some bog standard paint stripper. Whack it on. I think uh, you can see it's almost turning orange in places. And Underneath you can see the, the original uh, red paint. Um, so it just goes to show that, <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely in the right model. Um, and so now we have the fun task of scraping all this old paint off. The trick with, I think, paint stripping is you're not going to get it all off in one go. So you can see the top, this top coat has come off a previous uh, owners sprayed white uh, so we'll take that off and we'll be quite meticulous especially around the numbers and stuff yeah so this round here is going to be a bit tricky I mean, it's, cut, it's coming off quite nicely um, but we'll get a little dremel in there Crikey, it's coming off very easily um, in fact I wonder if these no it's it's red all over. Must be undercoat from the factory or black. Well, that's the first um, first uh, scrape off. Uh, it's interesting, actually. I don't know if you know RZs and RDs. They generally come with a black black wheel. With um, this strip here is is um, bare aluminium. The same on the outside. Now I'm wondering if maybe Yamaha, because there's there weren't many I think they made with red wheels I wonder if they just took their stock of black and silver wheels <laughs> and just sprayed over the top with red because you can see here there's no black underneath it's just there was the white now the red nothing underneath but in here you can see it's got the black which sort of matches that pattern so who knows maybe maybe that's what they did they just took the stock and painted them all red We'll never know. So I've just um, sandblasted uh, a few bits. I haven't done some any sandblasting for a while. I've got like a a very small, um, tiny sandblasting cabinet in the roof. Um, it's sort of mixed results. It, it seems to take off, you know, paint off this really easily. Um, probably took maybe 20 minutes just to do that um, and so yeah it works quite well on, on small parts especially fiddly stuff like this um, you know getting in all these nooks and crannies is really good um, interesting to see actually uh, this I suspect the chain has come off 
Oh, has it? Yeah, I think the chain has come off this once because there's a few what looks like bite marks, but it's quite minor. Um, so yeah, the bit, I'll leave in the old bearings. Uh, obviously, we won't reuse these because they're full of uh, blasting material, but it protects the uh, bearing surfaces that we're going to push into. Um, so yeah, and then obviously we'll put a new seal in. So these will, we'll give these a wash first just to get rid of any of the grit. We'll pull out the old bearings and then put in the new ones and then we're good for painting. What's good about um, sandblasting is in grit blasting, especially on aluminium, it gives it a nice bonding surface or a sort of rough, almost like sandpaper finish. Um, so it's good, good to make the paint bond. Um, with the wheel, I must admit, I, you would have seen I, I, I stripped most of the paint off manually, but I just, this just fits, just about fits in there. And so I went over very quickly just to, again, give it a good key um, for the uh, primer, edge primer to bond to, so it gets a good grip in theory. So that's the other side. So yeah, that's done. And then um, likewise, uh, the rear disc, this was painted black. You can actually make out the, the R mark. I don't know if you can see that. Um, meaning rear disc. <laughs> um, and then on the inside there was a red paint. So I've just gone over that. That was pretty quick. Yeah, so, and we'll just spray that black, that inner disc. Yeah, so this is going to be an experiment. Um, you probably see in, my, in one of my videos, I bought this, uh, this is uh, automotive paint. It was very cheap, 14 bucks. That's like the same for a can of spray paint, but obviously we'll go maybe 20 times as further. So this is acrylic, uh, gloss black. We've also got acrylic, satin black. We've also got um, this stuff, which is epoxy. So I don't know if if uh, acrylic will mix with this. And it's called subframe black. So it'd be interesting. I mean, this is a subframe. <laughs> in a way um, so we could do various combinations we might uh, spray it onto bare metal we might spray it onto uh, primer and all with acrylic and just see what the see what it comes out like if if it needs uh, enamel thinners we'll know because it just doesn't mix it all globulizes and it's a mess so yeah, that's the that's the test, and we'll so we'll spray that up and compare the two. Um, Just to explain what I'm doing here, these two are the sprocket carriers of the SZR 1000X up. The one on the right I originally painted with the cheap two dollar shop black spray paint, and it's I'm not at all impressed with it. It just chips off. So the idea is I'm going to actually spray the one on the left. Uh, with the new paint as a test and also the, the one on the left shows the sandblasting when you use glass beads so you can use two types of um, blasting material one is like sand or grit which we've seen in the previous video and this smoother finish is achieved when you use uh, glass beads so I'm just going to compare the two sprockets carriers one sandblasted one with a glass bead to see if it does any difference on the uh, final finish of the paint. Yeah, see, see how they go. So what I'm doing here is, um, as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna do some test painting to see what the black is like, and then we can pick the closest uh, black finish for the frame. Um, yeah, so I've just got, this is just scrap uh, metal. So I've just whacked a bit of paint stripper on. Uh, it's been on for about five minutes, uh, letting it do its magic. You can see it's beginning to come off quite quite easily. In fact, so I'll strip the paint off. Um, what we'll do is we need uh, eight pieces. 
why we're going to do this. So we'll um, just cut these into three lengths. So that's 600, so yeah, 200. So here I've just painted the um, test samples in etch primer, followed by um, a primer filler, which is like a thicker priming coat. Um, yeah, so they're all ready to put the top coat on. So these are the results of the uh, these spray test coats, I suppose, uh, just to see what the finish is like with the black paint we've got. Um, I did it in a real rush because I um, had to go away on holiday for a week. So it's good time and get this sprayed up, leave it for a week. It's freezing here at the moment, so stuff's taking a long time to dry. So I just left it while I was away for a few days. But like I say, I was in a bit of a rush to get this done before we left. And then we've got black coat of uh, the subframe black, which is enamel, and then acrylic, uh, gloss black, acrylic satin black, and acrylic just auto black paint. And then the same again, matching paint on the bottom row, but I'll put a clear coat over the top, acrylic clear coat, just to see what the finish is like. This, I think, is probably going to be the winner, the subframe black. Um, it's a nice, got a nice gloss. Quite a heavy coat, um, not too shiny, uh, goes on quite well. Um, so yeah, I think I'll hold this up against the frame just to do like a comparison. Um, yeah, so I think overall the, the finish is quite good. Uh, this was a gloss black without the clear coat. Um, yeah, it's all right. It's not super glossy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be that great. I think it certainly needs a clear coat over the top, but that's yeah, all right. So, yeah, that's okay. The satin black, yeah, definitely satin. It's, it gives a nice finish. Um, might use it on some things, um, but compared to the compared to the um, subframe one, it's got a nice. This has got a bit of a nicer finish to it, a smoother finish um, compared to that one. And I must admit, I was running out of uh, time and paint. Uh, I was in a bit of a rush and didn't mix up enough. So this is a bit of a thin, a bit of thin coat. But these are supposed to have a clear coat over the top anyway, because um, that's just how it works. Um, one thing though, like I mentioned, uh, so this basically I sprayed these two exactly the same and then put a clear coat over the top. Now you can see here, it's acrylic clear on enamel base, and it didn't like it so it just wrinkled up maybe i was a bit too quick but i think primarily it's enamel and acrylic don't like each other obviously and this this is what happened so this is a bit of a lesson don't if i was to put clear coat over the top definitely need to put a um, enamel uh, clear coat over the top not acrylic so that's a bit of a reject but um there you go it's an experiment um that's not too bad so this is the gloss black with a clear coat over the top it's quite shiny there's a few imperfections like i said i was going a bit too quick uh but in terms of a finish uh yeah it's, it's quite a nice gloss so yeah i'm quite happy with that uh, again clear coat over the top of the satin which is a bit weird why would you do that um but ah, it's all right. It's, it's, if I run out of uh, gloss black, this is a doable. Uh, it's quite nice. And then this is finally the auto, um, just a normal automatic <laughs> auto car paint black. Uh, not quite as glossy, not as uh, good depth. There's a lot of imperfections. I must admit, um, I could have put a few more coats of primer on underneath and then flattened them off. But... Um, yeah, it's all right. So I think the winner will be um, just a plain old subframe black without a clear coat over the top. Oh, stop the press. Um, no, it's not suitable, as you'll see. Like I say, the, these test samples have been sitting for a few weeks now, and so in theory have gone fully off. I originally thought that this colour would be all right. The enamel subframe black. There's no clear over the top. It's just a paint. Um, it's not too bad, isn't it? Now I've got it in the daylight or sunshine. It's not as shiny, so it's probably not as um, suitable. But more importantly, um, 
it's very soft paint uh, maybe because it is designed to be subframe it's I think to absorb stone chips and things like that um, yeah so you can easily I'll zoom right in just with my fingernail you can see that's pretty smooth there let's get the sunlight on it see that's pretty smooth I just put my fingernail in that and um, yeah it's soft as butter but that's probably by design and it's not suitable for what we need it for in fact I don't think I'll be using this paint at all it's really for like I say the underneath cars I reckon so yeah it's a nice finish <laughs> but wouldn't last very long um, we've got acrylic gloss black with a clear over the top um, I might go with that because that seems to be the closest match and with a clear coat on top you sort of got extra hardness you know that won't take my finger now I mean it's the the paint's probably fully fully cured because it's been sitting there for uh, maybe three weeks now um, and it's not not taking any dents so I think we'll just do that um, this is just the uh, spraying up the primer and etch primer I tend to try and uh, line up a few things to uh, spray all in one go so that all the primer it's more efficient that way but um, it's a small space so I can only do a few things um, so that's the steering stem clamp top one and that's the brake caliper um, one important thing you should remember is once you've done your spraying uh, remove any masking tape as quickly as you can the reason being once the paint hardens up and as you peel it off once it's gone hard you tend to tear the edge of the um, the paint Here's the uh, red base coat. Um, it's quite flat because that's how it works, the um, undercolours. You then go over the top with uh, the clear coat and that makes the gloss. So here we are with uh, the newly painted or freshly painted wheels uh, compared to the tank in the middle which is original. Uh, first of all, what I'm seeing on the camera is different to the colour I'm seeing in real life. In the camera it's quite a lipstick red almost orange in in reality it's more of a pinker pinker red I suppose is a word or darker red um, yes yeah, so it's difficult to convey the, the color here there is a subtle difference though between this 86 Yamaha RZ red versus older Yamaha reds so this is I've got here a, an original um, mudguard which is a previous model and to me in real life maybe you can see a bit there with the sun coming out of it it's more of an orangey red um, almost flatter red it's difficult to you know, the camera's not picking up but there is a subtle difference between the two um, yeah so previous I think the 80s early 80s red Yamaha is a bit flatter red I suppose also that's this isn't metallic the mudguard whereas this is the these tank the tank and I matched it um, there is a metal flake in that um, yeah but I think that's come up that's a pretty good match given that we don't have color codes um, it's impossible to find color codes the easiest thing is just to take an original bit down to your paint shop and hopefully they've got a a camera that can detect the pigments and then they color match it for you um, it's the easiest thing to do than trying to scroll through the internet and it, even when I've found color codes things like uh, cherry red or um, I forget there's the, the the website that has a lot of these uh, paint codes the, the local paint shops have never heard of them they can't find them in there databases anyway that's 
it's come out quite well so we're gonna let them dry harden off for a couple of weeks and then we'll um, put the bearings and discs back on